Hello friends, this is Rahul Magan here as a Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting PT Limited, which is a Singaporean multinational group. As you very well understand that one clear endeavor of Treasury Consulting is that we have to enter into all the areas. And before moving into this uh, relevant topic, which is a crack spread, I also wanted to tell you that now we are setting up a Treasury desk. Of course, the, there is would be a specific video that would be coming very soon on that. In this, all the existing desks which we have, we are going to integrate integrate them and this would require minimum, minimum two years of effort. So we are not expecting this to happen before December 2020. And once it would happen, there is nothing pertaining to the treasury function which treasury consulting cannot offer. Either it's a training program, it's a PPP, it's a custodian, it's a monetization. You know, it is uh, uh, FICC, fixed income, uh, fixed income, uh, currencies, commodity, OCIO, everything we would be able to cover. And once it would done, we would be equals to a, a, a mid-sized European bank who would be able to offer everything. Of course, this journey would continue. Today, this company has decided to enter into another uh, new stream, which is energy derivatives. As you very well understand that Treasury Consulting is having a wonderful position as far as the foreign exchange is concerned. With the immense blessing of immense blessings of Lord, you just name the bank and you just name the derivative instrument and we will let you know about how the pricing actually happened on Reuters or Bloomberg or might be both. We have so many videos about foreign exchange, but now we would be entering into another uh, uh, you know stream which is energy derivatives and today we would be covering one important concept of energy derivative which is crack spread something which most of the people actually do not know what happens is that when actually when you are a foreign exchange trader in fact when I was a, I'm I'm a foreign exchange trader we never look at energy derivatives carefully and that is a hard reality throughout my seven seven and a half years of career I entirely focused on foreign exchange and interest rate swaps that is the only reason we understand interest rate swaps pretty well like external commercial borrowing principal only swap IRS FRA and all cap swaptions and all these instruments which we know but energy derivative is something which is multifold of the currency derivatives but what if I tell you that the daily spot for daily foreign exchange market of the globe is approximately 5.03 trillion dollar and that is as being as per BIS which is bank for international settlement but what if I tell you the oil itself of course as per the the the, the you know the literature which is available there are 300 types of crude oil available across the globe and that is uh, basically categorized that is uh, basically categorized on two factors one is the sulfur part of it and one is the density part of it so more the dense it is you know it's not good because it will require a lot of effort to refine it and more the sulfur it is it again require a lot of effort because sulfur is something which is not good for the environment so the cost of course would be very high that is one of the reason why we have two two important benchmarks of the globe one is known as Brent and one is known as WTI which is West Texas Intermediate these words we are often finding in the newspaper like we have WTI we have Brent but people are not bothered people are saying what exactly is talking about people always say oil is at 72 boss oil is not at 72 one of the benchmarks which two-third of the globe is using which is Brent is at 72 okay here it is 75.91 currently which is roughly 76 on the contrary, we have one more benchmark, which is West Te Texas Intermediate, which is in U which is basically US is following, which is uh, of course US also follow the Brent also, which is approximately 65.40 per barrel. Before moving further, let me tell you one barrel is equals to 72. Uh, sorry, my mistake. One barrel is equals to 42 gallons. So do not forget that. Of course, when it comes to, I'm not here talking about Canada because when we are talking about Canada, we the the way we are mining the oil is different. So Canadian oil producers mire it in a different note, US and others mire on a gallon note. So this matter ultimately we will end up in a uh, end up in a gallon. More often than not, let's take an example of few big names. I hope you you are well versed from these names, which is Exxon Mobil, which is Petronas, which is PetroChina. If you take from Indian perspective, which is Reliance Industries Limited, you always, when the results are coming, quarterly reports are coming or the annual report are coming, people, analysts and everybody is too focused about 
how much refining margins reliance has generated this quarter or for a relevant year generally that spans from $8 to $10 per barrel and people do not know about that people always look at what is the top line how much is the net profit how much is the gross profit people too much focus about that but people do not focus about the refining margins actually they play a very important role in the refining margins to whom you refer as a refining margins the traders refer this as a crack spread now what is a crack spread let me tell you you know when you extract the oil now forget that we have 300 kind of oils across the globe and it depends upon dense it depends upon dense density viscosity and the sulfur these all are chemical things only an engineer can understand in fact i'm not also very well versed about this this density viscosity and sulfur i have a knowledge that how exactly it plays out right now when you extract the crude crude is a raw material basically so once you extract the crude so if you owing a car you owing a you know plane maybe a company uh, like jet airways uh, you know air asia lufthansa and all you will not put the crude oil into that you will divide this into multiple basically the, the they are refined and the and the refinement there are multiple products which are coming by according to a lot of research as we have for 300 types of crude oil according to a research available in the google once you go to refine it you might find out 450 types of refined products 450 types i strongly bet that even for a trader with more than 20 years of experience it would be impossible for him to understand which kind of oil coming up with the which refined category it's not easy so globally all these three kind of oil the refined is divided into two parts one is known as rbop which is gasoline and one is known as heating oil which is known as ho now please note very well that wti is traded on nymax which is new york mercantile exchange on the contrary brent is traded at ice international continental exchange rbop is again new york mercantile exchange and new and uh, that Please also be note that all the refined products which are coming from the oil, they are uh, basically priced to the priced as per the local currency also. So it is not that RBOB gasoline or heating oil is priced only in dollar. You are able to get the pricing in euro. You get the Japanese yen, Swiss franc, and the list is enormous. So don't be worried about that. But yes, the very factor in this is the foreign exchange part. So example, dollar is a reserve currency of the globe. Euro to an extent, I'm not sure what would happen with the sales, Spain and Italy because a lot of action is going on, you know that. Uh, Euro is a reserve currency, uh, sorry, dollar is a reserve currency of the globe. So everything is being denominated in dollars. But you can buy all these two also in Japanese yen. But here the volatility of dollar to Japanese yen is being borne by the traders. So that would reduce your crack, crack spread. But anyways, let us start from what exactly it is all about. This was the background. Once you take one barrel of oil which is equals to 44 gallon of quantity so it could be rbob or it could be ho both are trading nymax here once i'm referring to barrel i'm referring to ice i'm referring to brent i'm not referring to wti although it's very hard to say that which refiner is having exposure in how many types of crude oil and what all refined product he is selling. But there are times like Reliance Industries Limited in November 2017, would, uh, they turn out to be the first company in India. In fact, their existence when they bought the oil directly from the US, directly from the US, since they bought directly from the US and I think that is expected to hit them, shipment has already been on the way that would be hitting them somewhere in November. So what, why they bought? Because the difference between WTI and Brent was more than $15. Generally, we tend to ignore that. Indian media specifically always said about oil is this, oil is this, and international media is also talking about oil is this, but nobody will tell about the, the difference between WTI and Brent. That actually matters. For traders, the different matters. For companies, the different matters. Because oil is a commodity. If I do not hedge, I am gone. In fact, there are several instances whereby company took the hedging position and they are still gone because the hedging position was not done at a point of time. Since we are a currency expert and hedging is hedging, you take it any asset class, energy, commodity, weather derivative, any, 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 
you should know that hedging is nothing but buying and selling in anticipation either it's an interest rate it's energy it's a commodity it's a weather that's up to you so if i'm doing a hedging three days from now assuming today is the 4th of june right although i know that it's the right time to hedge today then this hedging is nothing this is useless it's just like a cricket game whereby you to you started playing the shots at the at just when two to three hours left it was not required now it is supposed to be done when there were when you have envelope uh, envelope overs in your hand so one barrel is always equal to 42 gallons that something which we need to understand very carefully and we we should not forget that now let's talk about two people refiners and producers us is a producer a little part is being produced in europe also iraq is a producer iran is a producer well for iran i want to tell you that here it is very dense so it's being priced at wti in fact they have their own methods also we have one of the benchmark apart from wti and uh, brent is the dubai oman index so but here now it's been getting winded up actually people are being priced in the uh, as per brent right so uh, approximately if i go with the research then if i go with our connections also professional networking more than two third of the pricing of the oil is exactly happening in the brand so this dubai oman is also winding up to be honest but before moving further one thing which you sp which you should know specifically very clear and should not forget that the energy derivative hedging is not all about the skills it's all about the sentiments also of course i'm not saying that the foreign exchange hedging is or interest rate hedging is all about the skills it's or is it has nothing to do with the sentiment it has to do example like this italy italy scene which is happening now this has pushed up the the interest rate indexes of the italian bonds so more than 3 3.5% which nobody ever thought about it right dollar strength is gaining up euro is getting down gbp is again down so this sentiment matter but in case of oil this sentiment is multifold multifold means to say that if any any a statement given by any energy minister of saudi iraq iran or a dispute between the donald trump is going to write a twitter to iraq or iran anyone then oil prices will hit the wave i'll just take an example today is 4th of june and there is one news which is being flashed in the bloomberg which is that energy bulls sorry oil bulls are going to be losing reason the opec organization for petroleum exporting country has clearly said that they are not going to cut the supplies because they wanted the price to be intact now oil bulls have thought that the prices would move up they were thinking that supplies would be cut down the price would go to go up somewhere 85 or 90 or could be any could be between that 88 89 or maybe more than 90 also but now opec has clearly said that they are not going to be cutting the oil they are not going to be cutting the supplies which effectively means that in in a due course of time which is one week or two week from now oil would continue to be somewhere at uh, between 80 82 something like that somewhere between 75 and 82 this is my this is my prediction although cross cross elasticity matter that we going to discuss in a upcoming video now in this we are focused about this party which is refiner what the refiner will do refiner will get an oil here he will pass from a refinery and he will get up refined products which he is going to sell if i speak in a very layman language which everybody would be able to understand the profit margin which is the refinery margin is equals to the price of the sell minus the cost cost is the per per barrel per dollar barrel you are taking this is the refinery margin like for reliance this is somewhere 8 to 10 dollars sometimes more than 10 dollars also sometimes less than 8 dollars also which is the cause of concern now what happens generally although we are not uh, petro uh, petrochemical engineers who know that what are the 300 types of oil which is being getted even in fact i doubt that any trader itself might be knowing that also what we do we go with the logic of the market whereby we know that any kind of 300 types would have two products by products in english which is the gasoline and which is the heating so this is how the crack spread works there are two type of crack spreads that generally happen one is the sell crack what is sell crack which means that 
you are selling the refined products i'm writing here and you are buying the oil oil futures crude sometimes on the cash also of course there are lot lot to be discussed so we will take time to discuss one is buy crack buy crack means you are going to be buy the refined and you are going to be sell the crude you must be thinking why are people doing this people are doing this there are reasoning behind that they are on the both side one is known as reverse crack spread that we are going to talk about uh, in the in the in the next video now how it would happen let's take an example of a company which practically needs no introduction exxon mobil the largest petrochemical player of the globe now exxon mobil is a producer also and they are the refiner also they are both they are the producer as well as the refiner also now exxon now today the brent is at 75.91 which is here the brent is let us simply take an example of one barrel so exxon take one barrel which is 75.91 and exxon what exxon would be doing exxon would be doing the cell crack because 99% of the refiner are doing cell crack here we are doing reverse crack that we are going to discuss in the next video what is reverse crack is all about actually what they would be doing they would be buying one barrel at not at 75.91 what they would be doing we are going to divide it this by 42 because one barrel is 42 gallons the reason being gasoline gasoline and uh, heating oil are measured in gallons that is why so we are going to be doing 75.91 divided by 42 which is roughly 1.807 so one gallon of oil approximately 1.087 dollar this is you buy what you would be selling you are selling gasoline rbob so you are selling gasoline rbob here you would be selling uh, rbob is currently trading at 2.12 which is just saw on the bloomberg 2.12 and you would be selling the uh, heating oil which is heating oil which is s0 which is 2.16 what would be your net minus 1.807 plus 2.12 plus 2.16 this would be your net So your net would be approximately 2.473. This is known as crack spread. A refiner like Exxon Mobil, Petro China, Reliance, the list is endless. They are going to be making on 2.473 today. If they are going to be taking position in the currency futures, sorry, oil futures at, at ICE or NYMEX. This is just an introduction of a crack spread. There are so many things which would be coming. What is next video we would be coming what is 1 is to 1 crack spread we would be coming what is 5 is to 3 is to 2 crack spread we would be coming what is 3 is to 2 is to 1 crack spread we would be coming what is reverse crack spread and again we would be coming which is very important thing how to take the different future positions at ICE International Continental Exchange and one at NYMEX New York Mercantile Exchange which is a part of CME Group which is Chicago Mercantile Exchange. With this video I just wanted to introduce you to a very important concept which is a crack spread. At the last Treasury Consulting is now an energy player and you can expect a lot of things like we established ourselves in foreign exchange we would be establishing ourselves in energy also and take my words within six months you will see a lot of action in energy derivatives you will see agriculture corn you know sometime you will see the hedge accounting part of the energy derivative also now this is something i told you how what is crack spread once you would be this is the sell crack we not yet discuss the buy crack which we are going to be discuss in the next video in case you have any question my skype id is rahul5327 Email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in. Platform is www.fixedincome.global. Website is www.treasuryconsulting.in. Mobile 9899242978. Our KPO LPO line is 011-401-99774. There are multiple things on the way and I assure you that we are now a name in energy player. 
everything which you even do not think would come on the YouTube would be coming. Have a great time. Enjoy your day.